as 2023 presidential election hats up, the build-up to the race is not without twists and surprises by political actors. One of such occurrences is the opinion piece on premium times written by a promising presidential candidate in 2019 election, Tokbe Fashua, where he described APC presidential hopeful Senator Bola Ahmed Chinubu as a worthy person to support. The last has not been heard on vain reactions that have greeted these unusual peas, especially from anti Tinumbu forces. Today on the interview on Radio Now 95.3, we have the author of the piece himself, Dr. Tokbe Fashua. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. Good to have you. It's been a long time. We've been having, you know, looking forward to have this conversation. Let's get straight to the issue. How are you reacting to the criticism that uh, you were paid to do more like an image laundering mm. for Ashiwaju Tinubu? Yeah, okay, fine. Um, the point is that uh, people would rather be paid, okay, for everything they do. That's how they probably will think, you know, but... For me, it's not about payment, and there was no payment whatsoever, all right? Um, it, it reminds me of a certain time, 2008, I went for a program in London Business School. And of course, when you're going to some of those programs, they give you a pre-event uh, kind of interview. And you were supposed to were supposed to do those interviews ourselves, and when we got there, you know. And so we got there, and the professor, Professor Goffey, asked, is there anyone who scored less than 10? in question one, and I looked at it, I scored nine, and I raised up my hand. I was the only one, and he said to me, you know what, uh, maybe you should come and see me for counseling, and everybody laughed, but he then explained that that question actually gauges how important you think money is to your life. Um, and I happened to be the one among like 54 people from like 40 countries who felt that money isn't um, anything. And I think I haven't changed that much. So uh, it's very easy to just dismiss them. No hair off my back whatsoever because, of course, no uh, monetary transaction happened. None was given. None was taken. And I think that's how I completed or concluded the, the article. Then what happened to your presidential ambition? Mm -hmm. Some people have even gone further to say that you only wanted attention, which you, they think you've gotten. Yeah, no, not necessarily. Uh, this is not the first time I met, actually, uh, Ashura Jubala. I mean, I'd met him in 2016 uh, through Sunday Dari, who was then uh, maybe like his essay and what have you, you know. But uh, now the thing about having a presidential ambition is this. Nigerians seem to think, especially young Nigerians, that they, that some superstars who are coming and whoever vies for the first time must keep vying. After that election took place and the way it turned out on, on, on Twitter, a few young people will come and say, hey, you better go and talk to Shogun right now and talk, all of you should come together and Feladro Toye, don't come in 2022 and start telling us you want to run. I'm like, in your own family, they can't run for president or you can't run for council or what. And I've been in the vanguard of trying to get more people to get involved. That's what it's about. Um, so I'm saying to, you know, in a large extent that it doesn't mean that because I ran before, I must keep running. And of course, that one must not take a breath uh, you have to take a breather from time to time and, and gauge your options and see what you're doing. Does any, people really don't care, really, what happens to you, really. If you are selling your house to contest, nobody cares. In your own mind, if you're on, on the right path, you say, well, I'm doing it for Nigeria. But try not to listen to what people will say when you realize that they really don't care. And in fact, someone said that leadership was about taking a people to where they need to be whether they liked it or not. So a, a few people who are honest in leadership, in the quest for leadership, uh, you know, are people who, who know that they will not be appreciated. People will say all sorts of things. They will you know, try and discourage you and all of that. But you know that you have to keep trying in different ways you know, because we need to take our people to where they need to be, whether they know it or not, and whether they like it or not. So at some point, people like Lee Kuan Yew and Koda, we like to quote, that's what they did. They took their people from where they need to be, from, from where they were to where they need to be. So how, how are you going to play that role? Is it by supporting Tinumbu? Because some people will say, this probably a same of the same that we thought you are well, a breath exactly. of fresh air. So, so there's that black-white dichotomy which doesn't exist. 
In life, perhaps there are different shades of gray. The fact that someone is young doesn't mean he knows what he's doing. We have a few young people in government, I don't have to mention names, or who have been in government before, whether in National Assembly or as governors and so on. We have a few young people who have been also pretty woeful. So it's not about um, just, you know, and there's this thing, Nigerians, unfortunately, and I think, I don't know how we're going to sort that out, but Nigerians, there's this we versus them thing. And when people get into government, they become them. And everything you say on this side, especially on social media, must be antagonizing them. I, 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 I you know, came together, I, I brought guys together to form a party. Okay, we formed a party. I ran on, the, on that party for presidency. And do you know what? I've become them since then. That's why the fact that it was my money I spent. They, some even think that INEC gives people money, not a dime. We, we formed party at the point where we were giving INEC money. Okay? Not in those days where they formed the big parties and INEC was giving them money. Of course, by the time INEC came forward and even decided to abrogate all the parties, the same young people and the same Nigerians that we were talking about trying to give alternatives, they, they mocked us. Now we can see that people are buying forms for 40 million to run for presidency in PDP. I saw that from Dele Momodu a couple of days back. You know, I don't know how much APC will be, but to run for chairman in AP APC is 20 million. So the options that we try to give, the pain that we went through, creating structures, offices around the country with, you know, small, small donations and people working. In fact, the, the idea behind our party here in then was that, you know, we wanted a scenario. We didn't want professional politicians. We wanted everybody who joined the party at that level, you know, who was an ex school to have a second address, not, you know, people who wake up in the morning and put Nigeria's government under pressure, go to secretariat to see how much they can export. So is this a case of it. giving up? Well, not necessarily, but I mean, everybody has a right to take a breather and say, okay, maybe now you're not running, maybe later you will. And of course, I'm all about a better country, right, that works. And um, I see it every day, including the responsibilities that the, that the poor people need to bear. The poor people of this country, the poor, what they call in sociology and pol political science, proletariat. I see the responsibility that they need to bear. I know that the leader that will change this country will also be criticized, vilified, reported to Amnesty International, what have you, for trying to make the people change. Because a country cannot change by the leaders alone changing. Who are the leaders anyway? They were from among the followers. Yesterday they were followers. Today they are leaders. Some of them decided to be leaders because they decided okay. to step out and say, okay, we can do it. It's a lot of responsibility. So everybody will have to chip in in order to change this Okay, country. Dr. Tokwe, let's get to some specifics now. I, I, I don't want to misquote you. Uh, from the write-up, you described many of his mentees talking about Ashiwa Jubola, Hamed Tunumbu, as ready to show ingratitude so talking about his mentees even though you didn't mention names oh, yeah, some of these <laughs> okay some <laughs> of these people uh so-called mentees have come up to say that uh, they've been so successful in their own right it was a case of improving his government at that time I mean, I, I mean i think it's absolute nonsense really when this whole thing came up and someone said oh yeah ashivaji was using them there's a friend of mine gimba kakanda who is from niger state the guy said oh my god I wish, I wish somebody would use me the way Ashwadi used these people. Some of them, as commissioners, you become governors of your own state. These are platforms for leadership, for change, for transformation. If you are not able to use it properly, it's your fault. Hmm. You know, you become from local government. Some of them were busy, basically just running around town with nothing. They should understand the privilege. The few of them, I won't say many of them, maybe I'll say a few, maybe I'll say some. I won't mention any names. But they should understand the privilege that they've had. And that is life. In life, there's luck. You meet the right person at the right time. You get to, but you see, if, there's one thing I really, really detest, ingratitude for what God has done for us. God will not come down from heaven and, and give you what you want. He's going to send you to the right place, to the right person. The right person helps you. Say, hey, I only did two, two times in the Senate. Who does he think he is? Do you know how many people were vying for that same Senate? Do you know how many of your schoolmates never got to amount to anything? But, 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 These are people but I have who, a bit of people, uh, reservation are, here, are, and no, I stand to be enough, corrected. Fair enough. I stand to be corrected. Some would say that uh, it is more about karma, that there was a time this Tinumbu came in and some people were asked to step down, some people were asked to go That's down. Life. That's life. And uh, at the end of the day, yes. the men that brought him to power were relegated to the background in A.D., in it, well, you see, well, indeed, sometimes it may happen that way. 
I mean, look at this. There's a, there's a certain um, young man who was asked to step down in the recently concluded APC convention. Whatever, the guy that was running for, for, for youth, leader. youth leader. And he was making so much trouble. In my head, I'm thinking, you're part of a party, right? You know, And in, in that party, people have stepped down. Uh, 20 other people stepped down for the chairman. Who the hell are you, truly? So when you're part of a party of a structure, you have to know when to toe the line. So yes, of course, people may have stepped down for Tinubu, but I think that what I think that what's unique about Tinubu is that he looks out for his own, and that's very important. He gives them the right platform. There's this very popular picture that goes around online, his first cabinet, and I could see all of them from Yamika Doso, who was my ED treasury when I was working with Citizens Bank here in Amadou Belo. You know, you had Moise Bani right there, you had you had um, you had uh, you, Yemi Oshibadio. you had Yemi Oshibadio. you had all of all of these guys that come, you had Dele Alake, you even have the Oniru of Firu, who was then in a police uniform, standing behind him. As his ADC. As his ADC, what are you talking about? He has given platforms for leadership. And anybody that says he has ideas, look, we, we created our own party. We ran on that party. We struggled on that party. We invested. We saw how vast Nigeria is. For those who did not invest, those who did not invest can say whatever they like. For those of us who invested, who ran around this country, we saw the limits of this country. In fact, we couldn't see the limits, so, but we saw the extent of it. And we realized that, look, this is massive. Majority of our people are poor, they are uneducated and all that. Majority of Nigerians. We need to change that. But when are you going to import new people from mass to come and vote? So you have to understand so, that platform matters. So and that's for where me, the APCPDP thing matters. Okay. You know, so if I have a right to say, okay, listen, let us consider this properly. I've run, I've invested in this process. You know, it went the way it went. Perhaps we should scan around and see who can we support? Who is really going to make a, a difference? And I think I'm on the right track with this gentleman. Okay, before we go on break, let me just quickly put this question to you because I hear one language, even though you've not mentioned it, loyalty. Is loyalty the most important quality in politics? Not what about competence? Not the most important, but a pretty much very important. See, some of these concepts cannot be discussed in absolutism. You know, you can't say, what's the most important? No, I mean, it's not about just being loyal, following people up and down. And in fact, I don't think I should actually ask for loyalty in that manner. One thing I've seen about the man is that he's not afraid of being challenged intellectually. If the same Ojudu that is pushing Ojib Oshibadi or something wrote recently, uh, Senator Ojudu. Now, you man, now you're mentioning names. I mentioned his name, okay. and, and, and we had a discussion on it, you know. But he wrote recently and said that he was the one that introduced Yami Oshibadi to Bola Tinubu, and that at some point, Tinubu wanted to say, he said, Look, I'm going to fight on this issue of federalism with God, whether it's true or not, well, I don't know, with, on this with, with Obasanjo, who we need a brilliant lawyer. He went and brought Oshibadi. And immediately to be spoke with him, said, this is my guy. Let's get him in. That's someone that's not afraid. Given my position, he, you know, he sent people to call me. I said, I got a call at 4 o'clock one day. I said, look, Ashwadi wants to see you at 6. I started going there. You know, he's not afraid. So, and you see, the problem with many of our leaders in our space, really, is that a lot of them, they don't want to be outshone. Okay. Ashwadi is not like that. Therefore, loyalty is not the most important thing. But... You know, you have to have an open mind. You have to be magnanimous in spirit to engage with him, put your ideas across. He may shoot you down once in a while, shoot your ideas down. That is what leadership is about. Sometimes okay. they take it on, sometimes, you know, they say no. Okay, in case you just joined us, you're listening to the interview with Dr. Tokpe Fashua. We'll go on a short break, and when we come back, we'll go deeper into the conversation. Please don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back in case you just joined us. This is the interview on Radio Now 95.3 FM. And I have with me Dr. Tope Fashua. I'm sure some, some of you can't forget that name during the 2019 presidential election. This time around, he's not talking about vying for presidency, but he's supporting one of the presidential hopeful, Ashiwa Jubola Hamed Tinumbu. So before we went on that break, let's continue this uh, tra trajectory about your support. Uh, for Tinubu. Once again, let me just quote some of the things you said in your write-up on premium times. You praise Tinubu for building a vast, you call it social capital, Absolutely. and then accuse the protégés of too much familiarity. Is Absolutely. this not an endorsement 
of godfatherism, or some we call it another Men way of what about materialism. What about mentorship? Or why, why, I mean, so people use the word godfatherism, but I see that not, there's really nothing wrong with mentorship. To say, okay, this is my mentor, this is the person that raised me. Everybody had one, one person or the other that gives you a chance. When I got my first job in this citizens bank that I said, I didn't know anybody there. I just finished service, came back from Calabar, I was running, walking down all of this. I, I walked the whole of Aula Road on that day, going to Nick Bell Merchant Bank, Triumph Merchant Bank, this bank. They were bouncing me until I went to that citizens bank and somebody gave me a chance. I could never forget that person or the group of people who assisted me there. I could never forget them. So, there's, there's it, was still more there's of, it, it was still more of marriage. It was exactly. more of what so, you can offer. Look, I, do you know that people who are looking for, do you know that there are people, leaders who are looking for incompetent people only in this country? In fact, most of our leaders are looking for incompetent people. People who can don't have the idea. They which, is, which is but not look what at, you subscribe but look at, no, no, But look at the people I just mentioned. Talk about people like Yamika Doso, ex-City Bank, New York. You know, these are very tight people. They are like, these are very, Jamil Shibadu, brilliant people. For a man, so we see sometimes, you know, familiarity, familiarity breeds contempt. So you've been around saying, who is he? Who is he self? Shebi, Shebi, you know, uh, he's, he's not making himself like God. I don't think he's making himself like God. And that's why the man is smart. The most sagacious politician Nigeria has probably ever seen. I was looking at his picture in 1992 with MK Abiola and Abacha. And he was already wearing this cap with the infinity on it. I, will, I could never get to that, you know, attainment to say, I'm planning 40 years ahead. I'm not, I'm not that, I don't have that much faith, you know, to say. So he's been working on that thing since way back then. He hasn't changed that infinity cap. And he said, like, this is his life ambition. He wants to, you know, so I think we should, we should, we should give him expression. Especially, he's not stopping any other person from vying. But what I've been saying is that he is the only one who has been doing the right thing, making the right connections, traveling from one place to the other. They said, oh, yeah, people have been criticizing him. Yeah, he's frail. He's this. He pissed on himself. This and that. All sorts of things. You know what I'm saying? But hey, this man is moving. It's less than one year to the next election. If anybody that has ambition and you're not coming out now and starting to work, you're killing yourself. Well, sometimes we may need to consider the elect electoral timetable. But before you Yeah, go, but of I course, you know, you can actually do your consultation before you do the problem. And again, and that you also tells you, public. in our own time, the time for campaign is only 90 days. My brother, we have 37 con states. 37 states. <laughs> 37 states. Nobody could ever dare, except those who have the platform. So, 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 uh, what so now I heard they've increased it to 150 days. It's still never enough. What do you hope, what do you think would be your reward f from Tinubu if he becomes the president? Well, I don't even need, okay, let me put it this way. I don't need a reward, really. Um, you know, I mean, what are you looking I'm at? A, I'm a, I'm a good, I want I want see I, I engage Tinubu at the level of ideas. Let me tell you some of his ideas. I'm part of his writings. I've been actually following for quite a while, even before I went into politics. I saw that in your right yes, but I that mean that if he becomes a president, are we expecting the Tokyo Fashua to be the Minister of Finance or what exactly? I don't even like that portfolio. The, the, if you if I wanted to get a dream portfolio, I'd probably be in, in budgeting and planning. That's me. I don't know. What, 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 look, I've traversed the level of looking for money. But the point is this. Well, I, I, I wake up every day happy since I took this decision because whether Tinubu wins or not, I'm in a good place. I'm, I, I want to be with a leader who is about ideas. You know, the man talks about fiscal sovereignty. In fact, give you four terminologies here that no, I don't see any other politician that can engage with anybody on that. Talks about fiscal sovereignty, naira sovereignty, the fact that you don't have to sell crude oil before you change the money back before you pay your salaries. He talks about having a floor, you know, you so that the economy cannot collapse beyond. He talks about anti-austerity. He's been telling since the time of Okunja Weala, he's been writing to them, austerity is not the way. He talks about counter-cyclicality. That's even who you are seeing. You see, so I see that a leader can actually be misunderstood, grossly misunderstood. Talks about counter-cyclical policy. My time is really running fast, and we have so much to talk about. So it's very, very important, and I think that look, I'd rather just I don't I don't mind. You know, I want to be if I'm part of a team, I'm part of a team. I like to be part of a team. I've been out in the cold for long, like you know, struggling on my own, writing all of those things and all of that. I don't have to have any position under him whatsoever. So away from Tinumbu's story now, let's talk about some topical issues. What's your opinion about zoning? Because this 
it has become a real topical issue. Well, you know, equity says that, yes, you have to look at balance and inclusivity, all right? Um, you know, but of course, zoning is not in the constitution, but it's in the, maybe it's in the concern of some parties. Within those parties, yes, they should think about it, and it's a political decision. Wherever they want to take the, uh, the next thing to, and you know, they can reach consensus, just like they reach consensus with APC, whatever, they can reach a consensus. It, however, you know, the thing about consensus is that it must also be ratified before it becomes real in INEC. You know, everybody in that consensus building must sign and say, yes, I agree to this, you know. So, zoning is not a bad idea. They've done it before in, in one or two of the parties, especially in PDP, you know. Uh, but it's still, it must, be, it must be negotiated. It must be based on agreement. You cannot force any party, any political organization to zone to you by force. No. You must show that you are part of the team, you are part of the, of the consensus building process before that works. Let's also talk about the third force. Uh, for people who probably voted for you in the last election, they were hoping that uh, we have a new set of guys in the block, you know, third force. But this seems to have been relegated to the background. We have a daily model who said, for you to be the president, you've got to join either PDP or APC. Really, that's for now my so, thinking too. Yeah. So, so that's the reason why it's a very yeah. painful thing, but that's what it is. And I, in fact, the third force thing may not be as vibrant now like it was before. I mean, before uh, 2019, I was talking about people like Feladro Toye, Kinsley Moralu, my humble self, Shore. You know, so we had, you know, Donald Duke was there as well. You had Yabagisani of of ADP, you know, we had some guys who were something out they, they people, were, people were angry, you know, they were angry, they wanted to just express themselves. Now we are in the thoughts where you have people like Kwa Kwan so, who has also been around for God knows when, you know, and you can see Kwa Kwan so has gone to form his party. There's this group called NCF too, so with Patutomi and Co. there. I don't think that I don't think that we're still ready as a nation for this thought force thing. Unfortunately, it's a long discussion which we can't have here. The idea behind having a two-party system, which INEC is forcing, it's a criminal thing to do, forcing a country into a two-party as an electoral umpire. It's not their remit. It's not supposed to be for but, them but to do. According to court, it's, it's not really an INEC thing. I, no, uh, look, the, 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 the registration is criminal. And I don't see, it's not that the law is what it is today. The courts are wrong. And some of them are also, are also under different influences. And I can tell you, the law, the, as amended, the constitution says that you can only register a party if they don't win 25% in the presidency or 25% in state government elections mm -hmm. or 25% in local government local or government if election. they don't win one councillorship. As at the time I like, went to town with their criminal... You know, which they, was in, been... they had been, Number one, it hadn't been concluded. We ran only 33 state uh, elections in 2019. We didn't participate in Anambra in Ondo, where I'm from, in Edo State, among others. There were, and when we say, listen, we haven't even participated in any of the so-called local government or, or what's it called, the, um, the word election. We have about almost 10,000 votes in this country. They said, that's not our business. Go to court. The states are in charge of that. That means that the, the, the it properly interpreted, that law says that INEC alone cannot register parties. So you have to register, you know, in conjunction with CX. Because the process was incomplete. So that's the well, listen, that, that's, that's thing I have with lawyers, including judges, unfortunately. In this country, they print black, white, and you know, all sorts of things. L judges will sit on such a clear thing and, and give a judgment and say they are, they, are, they are this. Because the process is incomplete. The, the constitution has been misinterpreted. If I wasn't an economist, I'd be a lawyer. And I know they're very wrong on that count. <laughs> That's a very strong one. I'm sure the judiciary will find it funny with you. But oh, yes, I, I, I want your to check them on that. But let's quickly come back to Tinubu again. Uh, for example, the convention has been concluded, and some would say for you to be the president or to be a governor, this whole thing starts from who becomes members of the NWC. Yeah. With the list that emerged, do you think the chances of Tinubu Absolutely. are waning down or is I have shooting up? I have no doubt. I think that it, it, it keeps going up because this is someone who, per second, is working on on his strategy. Per second, and now you may say, "Oh, this one was his favorite." No, the favorite didn't get. Look at the list of people that are there. You know. However, he, he, he's so good in politics, such that there's nobody that is there that he cannot befriend, or he has not been befriending. If it's about friendship, or in terms of respect, this is or the, perhaps the only person for now who has that. Pan Nigeria support. You need to see support for him in the in the north of this country, the southwest, the northeast, the northwest, the, the north central. You know, 
maybe he has to do quite a bit of work in what the about southeast. southeast? He, he has to probably, you can't have it all. You know, you know, for several reasons. I don't know if there's a bit of sentiments against him from there, but they're not looking well. But of course, now someone like Peter Obi has talk about support now. People, are you talking people, about the people on the street? Some may yes, not even agree people with you. on the street. Yes, even, even the people some will want to remember. I would this. think that if I was a strategist, if we were doing, I would say that okay, South is not looking too strong for you. South South may be a little bit better now. South East has Peter what about South West? and I think that uh, Peter Obi is also a very strong person, a fantastic person, but may not be quite the politician, not a national you know spread in terms of politician and being a politician. I think he's strong as well, you know, and. Has been around and this country at that level of presidency name recognition is very very important our people want to have been hearing about you and that's where this issue of thought force is problematic our people want to have been so when you hear obasanjo obasanjo anywhere in this country obasanjo the year of buhari buhari ah, buhari had been a head of state in the 70s well whatever on our 90s rather you know you know then you hear Tinubu now Tinubu is actually in poor position in that regard and Atiku also is almost there. You know what I'm saying? I think that they are still playing him around. I'm not sure that they want to give him all sorts of, you know, plots and so on in PDP. That's their own problem. But okay. before all of this settled down, I actually made my decision. Okay, finally, before you go, let me quickly get your take on the Electoral Act uh, 84, subsection 12. What is your take? Are you with the AGF or with the National Assembly? Uh, well, I think that's the part that says that people have to resign. Your appointive positions. Yes, appointive positions and so on. Uh, well, I think, um, I, I, I may not know what the AGF is saying, but I think what the, that part is trying to say is to say, who should, you know, when you're in position, when you're in office, you have the appurtenances of office and all of that. Should you resign before you can contest? I think that's what he's saying, you know. I think that it's only fair for people to resign in order to contest, not to carry the appurtenances of office, the privileges of office, into an election. Sometimes I tune off, actually, when they start going back and forth, because my focus is different. Let's focus on good governance in this country. You know, let's focus on integrity, fairness, equity in this country. And everything will fall into place. But all of those things about electoral acts and all of that, the same way they went and amended the act and decided to take us out, it was it not, Equilimadu was Senate President when this thing was done. Deputy so, Senate President. Deputy Senate President. So there was collaboration between APC and PDP, and I think that uh, President Buhari too did not mind that happening. But what they did was they disenfranchised millions of youths in this country and threw them into the hands of, you know, separate, separate separatists. IPOP, the one that went to IPOP went to IPOP, the one that went to uh, Iboho went to Iboho. You know, everybody. The best way to rein in the energy of the youths of a country is to get them involved politically. If you like, you sneak up behind them. But they were also, the, the, the powers that be were also afraid that maybe, you know, some of these youth may begin to emerge. You know, they decided to shut okay. them down. So that's a problem. Thank you so much, Dr. Tokwe Fashua, our former presidential candidate. It's yes. very, very important. <laughs> and on record, a strong supporter of Ashiwa Jubola Metinubu. Let's see how the thing turns out. We might be back again to talk about this issue. And this is how far we can go on the interview. I've been speaking with Dr. Tope Fashua. Until we meet again, I am Coyote Ladeide saying bye for now. <laughs>